Faisal told me that he was in that he was in Cheder with Tosh Rebbe back in, in Hungary. So and he remembers the Tosh Rebbe was always like this from the kid who didn't go out for recess and like said to him the whole day. So he was the target of people who tempered him. So people were always making fun of him. It was like the nebby kid in the corner who didn't participate, who was uh, who was saying kill him all day. He says, in all the years that I know him, a little kid being provoked and provoked and provoked, not once did he ever lash out in frustration, anger. Not once did he respond. He was from the love and venom of Karposan, the Lloyd Meshivin, and it's those people who end up having a special, a special koyach, the brachas. Like the famous story, I think it was with the stipler, with the person who couldn't have a child, and the stipler told them to go find somebody who was humiliated in public, who doesn't respond, who doesn't answer. And at that moment, they're like a god will be your soul, and they have the ability to give a bracha. So that's really who the Tosha Rebbe was. He was not a hocus pocus type of person. He was just someone who was always maver al midoisa. He never ever answered anybody back. Even during the Second World War in the, in the concentration camps, Mr. Weisberg told me that he was a Rebbe. So, of course, everybody said, you don't have to do your work. We'll chip in. We'll work extra hard. We'll work and do your job. And the Tosh Rebbe says, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And he insisted on doing his job. He said, at the end, we forced him not to do his job, not because he didn't want to, because he, he, he was a, such a batlan. He had two left hands. He couldn't get anything done, and he would mess it up, and then we would get punished for it. So you tell him, to just stand aside, we'll get your work done, because otherwise we're going to get into trouble for it anyway. And and like, like the Tachi Rebbe, he, he, like he, he said everything. You know why he said everything? Because he was a very the guy. Whatever was in the machs, he could say. As a matter of fact, someone once asked him, why do you say the whole Tehillim and learn the whole Masech Hashuma uh, Yom Kippur night? He said, it says so in the machs. He was a very like a simple, a simple guy in that respect. He just said he just did what it said in the Maxer. And that's why, in order that they should finish Yom Kippur before Hashanah they, Rabbah, the, the, the Maxer that they, they actually printed a special Maxer for the Tatsu Rebbe that was missing half of the stuff so that he wouldn't have Teddy Skippy. So he actually had a special Maxer printed that was missing half the stuff. This way they were able to finish Yom Kippur uh, you know, before before Hashanah Rabbah. It was, a, it was a very, very holy Eden. It was a very practical Eden. It was a very practical Eden. And his Kedusha comes. From the same place that everybody, every godless Kedusha comes from, it comes from a, a, a long life of self sacrifice and constantly putting the needs of others before yours, which is something that's very remarkable. And that's where the Rabbi Shalom gives a kaya. So, from him, that's what I always learned. That being a Rebbe is not hocus pocus. It's, it's, it, being a god is not hocus pocus. Being a is not hocus pocus. It comes from purifying oneself by, by never answering back and, and always saying the MS and, and uh, and and uh, doing that your whole life consistently. I mean, we should all be zeicha to that. It's in his neshama should, should have an aliyah, and he should be male kiyosher for for all the Okay, let's see the head of the Gemara. <coughs> I believe that we are on the Chav Ches Hamid Beis towards the bottom at the new Mishnah, and the Mishnah tells us Kol Shiva Sayomim all seven days. The seven day, for, for the seven days of Sukkot, you make your Sukkah, Kva, and Rashi says, that means Liyash kol Iker di Rasego. That's where you should primarily be living. And his house should be a place where he goes to visit. What happens if it rains on Sukkot? At what point are you allowed to leave the Sukkah? And once again, look how Rashi says it. Then go down. Because in those days, they always made their sukkahs on the roof. So it was always coming down from the sukkah. Nowadays, we really say, I'm going down to the sukkah. Because usually the sukkah is on the ground level, and we're coming down from an upper level. But in those days, sukkahs were always on the roof. At what point do you have to leave? When his porridge gets messed up. And Rashi says, Yes. Uh, that 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 um, that terminology is in Rashi. In Rashi's days, they did not go down. How do you Why know Rashi, do you... that word? Because Rashi didn't was they all live in buildings in those days. 
Rashi's days, Rashi was in Europe. Right. But he was in, a, he was in an old, old city. Is, Probably in the cities, they lived in, uh, in stone buildings, not in thatched places. No? Okay, so what we're saying, the, 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 what we're saying, there's a picture online Rashi. somewhere about the wall that got indented when Rashi's mother was getting run down by a carriage. And worms. Right, that, right, that's a two story building. Okay, no, no, no. I, we have two story buildings today, too. But what I mean to say is that you're saying that, even, that in Rashi's days, they used to make, we see here that in Rashi's days, they used to make their sukkahs on the roof as well. Not in the Mishnah. That's what it seems like, like Rashi's delirating. Yeah, but he's yeah, saying yeah, shot right. in the Mishnah. Rashi's saying shot in the Mishnah, not in his. Right? That was. I understand, the... I understand but, but, what, but the Mishnah is a little science. Why did Rashi have to identify that it means going down? Why, why is that relevant? It means to leave the sukkah. Yeah. I guess I, mean, I guess that was the normal way of people speaking. Because maybe that's how it used to be, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the real answer yeah. is. Okay. okay, so it's up to Hilda Gomer Viter. Oh, one second. There was something that I wanted to kind of see to share that was relevant to Tasha Rebbe. Oh, I forgot what it was. You had a very good story, Chaim Chi, that I that I wanted you to share, and I forgot what it was. Okay, I'll see if it comes back. Okay, oh no, I know what it's about. It's not negated to the Tasha Rebbe, it's negated to the Gemara a little bit later. Yeah, it's negated to the Gemara a little bit later. Okay, Zach the Gemara. So I'm putting you on notice. If the mikveh gets dirty, no, it doesn't mean that. It means if the porridge gets messed up that you're eating. Someone once told me, when do I stop going to the mikveh? When it gets too smell, yes, I stop going. They bring the right from the Mishnah Sukkah. So what does that what does that mean to so Rashi? When your porridge will get messed up. Rashi says, what is a mikveh? Call tafshal coffee similar to a mikveh. Anything that's sort of gelled. Loy rach, it's not too viscous. Um, so it's not too too loose, but not too viscous. Curry mikveh, that's called a mikveh. So it's it's not just a watery soup. It's 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 more like a porridge with some consistency to it. I remember when I was in the mirror. So we used to use this villa mikveh, the original villa mikveh. That wasn't the fancy building that it was today. And I remember they had to keep the water at a minimum of 110 degrees Fahrenheit so that it shouldn't gel. So you always knew it was going to be hot. Anyways, so it was also a very miraculous type of mikveh because you were able to go into the mikveh bald and you would come out with a full head of hair. It was mamash a miraculous type of uh, mikveh. It did very special things. Anyway, so the, the Mephorshim tell us that even though that's the sheer Meshitosh and mikveh, if you're not, let's say you're not eating that. Let's say you're eating the food that wouldn't get ruined by that amount of rain. Nevertheless, you're allowed to leave the sukkah once it rains to the point that a mikveh would get ruined. You're allowed to leave no matter what you're eating or even if you're not eating. Okay, mashlu mashal, lama davadon. Chazal give a mashal to what is it considered, what's the comparison between it raining on sukkahs. Le'evid shabalim zakois le'rabbah. An evid who wants to serve his master and the shavach like he's not upon them, and I'm going to tie just like the maskana the gemara. And the master took the kois that the that the servant poured for him and splashed it back in his face. He rejected his service. Dr. Ashi Moshe Levit claimed Gishamim Hayyodim Bechag Simin Kolahim Moshe Levit. The Rambam seems to argue, and the Rambam seems to say that it's only a Simin Kolah if this happened on the first night of Sukkot, but any other night would not be a Simin Kolah at all. The Shavuot shall mayim. Shouldn't, shouldn't that go according to Rabbi Eliezer or the Rabbanim? I mean, Rabbi, if it's a mitzvah every seven days, you have to eat every meal in the sukkah. Then, according to that shita, shouldn't it be an avla every time it rains? Uh, so you want to say that it's a raya when the Rambam? It's a raya that the Rambam is paskening, not like Rabbi Eliezer, that you don't have to. That's a very good point. It's a very good point. If there was a special mitzvah to humans every day. Then maybe it would be a simon, uh, a simon ra. Very interesting, very good point. And we talk it don't pass like a little bit. And now Rashi's the shavuot like kishin shel mayim. I don't know how Rashi knows that it was water talking. Maybe because it's rain. Okay, I'll ponder the gemara mafarish mi shavuot like. The gemara is going to explain. Are we talking about the eved splashing it on the oven, or is it the oven splashing it on the eved? But we'll we'll assume it's that way because that's the maskana of the gemara. There's a, there's a whole bunch of interesting shilas about rain. First of all, there's a Shiloh. If you live in a rainy place where it rains in the fall, like Toronto, are you mechuyiv 
to go somewhere for Yom Tif where it doesn't rain. So the Shaila, when it's mentioned, discusses Eretz Yisrael. But I, I figured it wouldn't be any different than going to California or maybe Barbados, where like we learned a couple of days ago in the Gemara, Aruba, right? So are you supposed to make it a point to go to a place where it doesn't rain? So the most, most of the places will say it's Teshu Ketaduri, you have to live in your home. There's no special Indian to go away. Uh, I, if there's anybody who's in the Yom Tov Hotel business, I apologize. But the, there's no Mechiv to go away that you should find rain. The other place can say that this is only a bad simon if you're in a place where it normally doesn't rain and it rains. But if you live in a place where it's normal for it to rain, like in Toronto, where we're in the rainy season, we're in the fall, then it's not even a bad simon at all because it's normal for it to rain. And it's also only a bad simon if it didn't rain before. In other words, it was, it was very nice weather air of Sukkot and boom, the first night of Sukkot, it starts to rain. That's when it's a simon rock. But if it was, it's been raining for a couple of days, then it's not a simon rock because it's not showing specifically on Sukkot. <coughs> and then there's the whole shayla of whether or not you're allowed to stay in the Sukkot if it's raining that bad. So we know the Lubavitchers stay in the sukkah even though it's raining. We don't. There's a, there's a sheet of the mashag that says the reason why you have to leave the sukkah when it rains and, 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 and the Amaratzes we don't leave is because it's a stire and, it's, and, it, and it also hurts your simple jamtub. However, if it's, if it's going to hurt your simple jamtub to leave the sukkah and for care, you have the simple jamtub staying in the sukkah even though it's raining and the vada is a mitzvah to stay in the sukkah. And that's why I assume Lubavitcher or maybe other Hasidim uh, stay in the sukkah. We also know that there's a shita of Rabbeinu Tam that says that even though there's a shlak spread over the sukkah, once you make a sukkah, you can't be mevatel the sukkah. But according to the shita of Rabbeinu Tam, avad if it's raining, you're much better off staying in the sukkah and eating there with the shlak down. Another interesting point is sleeping in the sukkah. We know, or even eating in the sukkah. You're eating in the sukkah, and it starts to rain. So you get up and go inside. So the Allah is, once you start eating inside already, you, and even if it stops raining, you don't have to go back out. Because that's also mitzdayer, to pack up and to go back and forth. As a matter of fact, the place can say, even if you didn't start eating it inside, but you already transferred all your dishes and you set up, you already set up the table inside and you're ready to sit down and it stops raining, you're still not to go out. Because once again, that'll be a mitzdayer, having to go back and forth. Then there's a shayla about sleeping in the sukkah in the rain. What's the halacha? What's the halacha? If it will be the gay eating as well, but you sleep for more hours than you eat. So what would be the halacha is if you know the weather forecast is it's going to pour middle of the night, but right now when you're ready to go to bed it's dry, or you know it's going to be pouring soon, but right now you could you could still eat in the sukkah. So you, you say I don't have to get up in the middle of the night. I don't have to get up in the middle of my suda. Let me just set up inside and I'll eat inside. So that the person say no. You, you're not allowed to leave until it actually starts to rain. It could be the place can know that sometimes it happens that the weatherman is wrong. But uh, even if you know for sure it's going to rain, you're not allowed to eat inside or sleep inside. You have to start, and once it starts to rain, then you can get up and go, and you don't have to go back. <laughs> okay, so let's see the Gemara. Tony Rabban. Kol Shiva Sayyam, Adam Isis Ukrasik Tha, Ube Sayyara. Ketzad, what does it mean? How does it take a practical uh, manifestation that the house is Iraq? How you like Kalem Noin, if you had beautiful Kalem, I guess, uh, I'm not sure what Kalem is referring to, dishes or clothing, Milo in the sukkah, you take it into the sukkah. Matsoy is noise, you get beautiful linens, Milo in the sukkah, take them into the sukkah. Oichel, the shoisa, umatayo the sukkah. You eat, you drink, you relax, all of your activities you do in the sukkah. Notice what's glaringly omitted is learning. So we'll see about learning soon. We know how to meet. How do you know this? The Tanu Rabbanu Teishu came to do Mikan Ramu. From here we see Kol Shiva Sayamim Oisa Adam Sukkos Aikva Ubeis Aiyai Ketzat Hoyu Lakelam Noim Milon Masuka Matzoyis Nois Milon Masuka Oichel Vishoyse Umatayal Masuka. And now the Brisa adds one more activity Umishaning Masuka. And you sharpen yourself in the sukkah. Let's see what Rashi says is Meshanin. Soiver Limudoi to understand his learning, Umechatchoy, and to sharpen it. 
Albuyam, cut it down to sharp, to sharpness. Lamoid, let's see what the Bach says. Lamoid, let me find the Bach. Lamoid, a love. To get clarity in what you're learning, you can do that in the Sukkot. Which would mean learning the Gemaras. And the Svaris explaining the Mishnah and the Brisa, Matam Zechayev, Zeh Potter, why is this Chayev and this is Potter, Zeh Asr, Zeh Mutter. So that's what it means. So you're supposed to learn in the Sukkah as well, that's in the Brisa. And is that so that you're supposed to learn in the Sukkah? Learning Sukkim and learning the Mishnah is, which isn't getting deep into Lomdas, it's just learning the facts. Rashi says, Likrois, Mikra, Shabbat, Sab. The Lishnais Mishnais are Ruchas Eskurus Papa, that you do in the Sukkah. But Usnuye, but getting into the deep Svaris, learn Barmi Metalasa, learn outside the Sukkah. What Pshat? Zok Rashi. Usnuye Ashas, that's the, the, that's the Lomdis to Svara. The Troyach, the Shanain, to work hard and to Mitch to get understanding and to clarify. The Chain Shemai Chidami Roy, Chain and Boys, El Machal Dikto. And all the, that, that's what, exactly what the, what the Marim did. They were the Medayik in the Mishnah and squeezing and extracting understanding out of it. So that, if you prefer harvesting and learning, if you prefer to do that out of the Sukkah, that's perfectly acceptable. The Mitzdayer, because you're Mitzdayer, who Mitzdayer, put them in the Sukkah. Because when you're working hard, it's very hard to, to concentrate. And you might want to be outside. So Rashi is not saying that you could go inside your house. Rashi, you might want to do it outside in the open air where there's fresher, better air, and therefore you'll be able to focus better and understand better. So at this point, we think that the snuye that Ravis mentioned is exactly the same activity as the Mishani. And Ravis said the snuye you do out of the sukkah, or you're allowed to do out of the sukkah. And the Mishanin, the, the Brahma says you do in the sukkah, and that's why the Gemara has a kash. So I, I guess nowadays, if it's cold in the sukkah and it's hard to concentrate and you want to warm up, invite her, you're you, you, so you should go inside. But this is talking about that you want to be outside completely to get to get um, to get fresh air. It's easier to understand. So Zakta Gemara. Kash, it's not fair. There's two levels. Of, of getting a deeper understanding. The really deep understanding requires more concentration, and that's where Rav said you should do that outside of the sukkah, or you may do it outside of the sukkah. The Mishanin that the Bryce was talking about is merely chazering the information to get it clear. Let's see how Rashi explained it. The Rashi, Hala Migris, play Matre Gavni Shinun Hab. There's actually two levels of, of Shinun. The Migris is Gemar Habura Lekbar. If you're just reviewing a sugi that you already have clarity in, and that's also Shmaitza, because it is Gemara, but you already have clarity in it. That's our Sukkah. Behind the Mishanin, that's what the Brisa means when it says you're Mishanin in the Sukkah. But Leuni, when you don't have clarity and you're still hurting, there, Barmi Mitalasa, if the air is better and you can concentrate better outside the Sukkah, then you're allowed to go outside the Sukkah. Now we're back on Chavtes Hamad Aleph, which is today's Bach. I believe the Tsiyonim changed it to Rava. You have a kaimu mekamei de Rabchista when they are in front of Rabchista. Rashi says, "Bosor da agmerinu shmaitza." After they learned the shear, after they listened to the shear from Rabchista, what they would do is mahati the gemara the hadi adavi. First, they would review the shear without delving into its deep meaning. So Rashi mahati the gemara is mashas shabam lipiv davar plani aser davar plani muter. And after they did that, then and then they went into a second session to delve into it to, to get a deeper understanding. First, what's the reason for everything and to analyze if there's any kashas that they had on this. So you see the two different levels of Chazar. Amarava, Mani Nishtaya the Metalos. Kalim that you drink out of, Rashi's Kaisa's goblets, Bechers, the Metalos, you keep them in the Sukkah, Rashi's Lopi. Because they're not mias, they're, they're things that you uh, cups are not mias. However, money michla, but trays that you eat on barmi metalos, they have to be taken out of the sukkah after you finish eating because they're dirty plates, dirty dishes are not kishma. Rashi says 
So Tosis has a different opinion. So Rashi is saying they're your dishes. They're your dishes, but you've eaten on them already. Tosis has, brings Rashi's breath and another one as well. Tosis is one of the Michla. But the Yeshua refers him that money the Michla means these are pots that never belong on a table or, or boards that you need the dough on, things that are used in the processing of food, in the preparation of food, but not in its serving or its, or its consumption. The time of the Kei Tadur Binom, the Hani Ein Regin and Leis Babes Dira, El Abais Yesham Levadim. It seems like their kitchens were not part of their house. They had a separate kitchen, and that's where these things belong, but not in your living room, not in your dining room. Chem Bishbad, Kugan Kedari, Ushvude, Ubetavu, Ubetavu. So it probably means we hold Allah it's both. You don't have dirty dishes lying around in the sukkah. You can't store your dirty dishes in the sukkah, and you shouldn't have pots and pans in the sukkah. How about chatzva bishachal? What a chatzva bishachal? Rajas chatzva is a catch of cheris, it's an earthenware jug, that you normally use to draw water from. The shachal is delishalate. So these are all um, vessels that are used to draw water from a well. Barami metalos. They don't belong inside the sukkah. The shraga, but the fire, the metal of belongs in the in the metal of So I didn't touch it right. I touched it as fire. But Rashi says it's ner shalcherish occurring to shail. It actually means the actual lamp, which is a little small cheres keli. So Armin but there are those who say barmi metal lasa needs to be out of the sukkah. For life, please, it's not a machalikus. In the big sukkah, you can have this ner. But in the small circle, Rashi says, So the way Rashi learns that it's just a, a keli, that's mias, I, I don't really understand what's the difference if it's a big sukkah or a little sukkah. But Toysus actually learns that it's something else. So let's just quickly look at Toysus. From the Bible, tell us shraga The reasoning for the lamb, unlike what Rashi seems to say, and maybe that Toysus is in front of Rashi, but right now, until now, the, the gist of what we were talking about was if it's a Dover Moyes or if it's not a Dover Moyes. But we're talking saying here, the Nair issue has nothing to do with a Dover Moyes. Because among the Michle Bayman Tlasta Hani Bishosh Ein Mishtamishman, when you're not eating with, you're not eating on those dishes and their are is that's when they belong out of the sukkah. Bishashuta Oichel Bakar Bishukh. The Toysis, but the Shiragi that we're talking about, it's not the lamp because it's Mias. It's shraga by the doilot. We're talking about a lamp that's lit. And you're using it for its light. That's what we're saying is usher to have in your sukkah. And I'm just going to jump down to the bottom of Toysis. The reasoning is in a small sukkah, you're concerned to have a fire there. And we're afraid that it's going to burn your sukkah down. The teda that loka davka. Notice it doesn't say it doesn't refer to it as a nair, it refers to it as a shraga, which is a burning flame, a wick. So so Zak says the shaila here is not al smias, the shaila here is out danger should you bring a lit fire into a sukkah. So therefore, if it's a big sukkah, then it's safe, you should do it. If not, no. Zak more about the Yordu Shaman. Tana we learn. Mikva shall grease him. What type of porridge? Porridge of grease. Rashi says, why what what's special about grease? They get ruined quickly. Abai was sitting in front of his rabbi in the sukkah. A wind blew. And they brought in which means little, little, little needles, I guess, little pieces of wood, little twigs. And it was very annoying. And Rashi tells us that Rabbi Yosef, Abai's rabbi, was known to be particularly, um, particularly, uh, uh, sensitive <laughs> to, to things that weren't perfect. So Amalu Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yosef told Abaye, take my kalim out of the sukkah, we are leaving. Amalu Abaye, how could you leave? We learned that it needs to be worse. It needs to be much much worse of an inconvenience than just some quicks falling in. Rabbi Yosef said, since I am very sensitive, you don't look at what the world, everybody has to Make the judgment based on his personal his personal feeling. If you're very very sensitive, then you don't have to stay in the sukkah. 
And it's very relevant in my family because there's a member of my family that's terrified of bees, terrified. If there's one bee that buzzes around, they freak out. So they, they're, they're, they're usually in the or put them in the sukkah because there's always a bee here and there. Most people, if the bees are around, they give it a swat. And if there's an infestation, maybe they wouldn't want to stay. But one bee here and there wouldn't bother most people. Remember, that was not a psak. That was just a story. Don't try anything that I say here at home. It's for entertainment purposes only. And he left the sukkah. You don't make him go back until he finishes the sukkah. He doesn't have to go back into the sukkah. Zok to Gemara Vaiter. If you're sleeping, and he left the sukkah. You don't make him leave. And the question is, what does shiyo'ir mean? What does the word shiyo'ir mean? Iboilu. Ad shiyo'ir, meaning meaning until he wakes up. So Rashi says, actually, your means till he wakes up in Hikats. So if he woke up, even if he woke up in the middle of the night, but it stopped raining, he has to go back to the sukkah. So he got into bed at 11, it started raining. He went, into, he went inside the house. At one o'clock in the morning, he had to wake up and he sees that it's not raining outside. Does he have to go back down to the sukkah? Or does he have until the day lights up? Rashi's Achiyal Amarashach. So that's the question. So Toshima, the answer is Achiyor Viyal Amarashach. Until the day lights up, which is actually past Amarashach, that's when it's all lit up already, and Viyal Amarashach. This is a stira. Yor, the day lights up later than Amarashach, not earlier. So if that's the case, how could the Mishnah say two different things? Two different things because Amr Shachar is before Yara Mizra, Rashi says. So what the, what the Mishnah, what the Brisa must be meaning to say is, you need two conditions to force you back into the sukkah. Unless both conditions are fulfilled, you're allowed to remain in your house. Alema at Yar until you wake up and via Amr Shachar. And Rashi speaks out that if you wake up in the middle of the night, so Amr Shachar didn't come yet, you can turn around and go back to bed. You don't have to schlep back to the sukkah. <clears throat> but what have happened? What happens if Amr Shachar comes and you're still sleeping? Does your wife have to wake you up and say, Yankel, it's already light. You need to go back into the sukkah. So for that, it's until you wake up. So basically, two things have to happen. A, it has to become Mahmura Shachar. And B is you have to be awake. And if, if both those conditions aren't there, then you don't have to go back to the sukkah. When the Mishra says it's like the, the that, that someone poured back the, uh, the, the, the water on the Ebed, who are we talking about? You're talking about the Evid pouring it on the Rav or Vaita. What would it mean? What would it mean is, we understand very simply, Hashem is rejecting our Vaita, that Mash is throwing the water back. What do you mean the Evid throwing the water? It means that the Evid is not doing the Avoida properly. The Evid didn't do his Avoida properly. So for rains, it's a signal to Klai Shol, you're not doing the void of the Sukkah properly. The Nafkamina is, the Nafkamina is, certain poets can say, Nafkamina, these two Tadmar, is if there's an Indian to stay in the sukkah even though it's raining. If it's like the Odin threw it back in your face, he doesn't want to avoid you and leave the sukkah. But if Shad is, you didn't do your avoid it right, it's showing you're not doing it right, so maybe it's a sign that you have to stay in the sukkah and, and, and work on yourself to be more dedicated to your body. Tashma, the Tanya, we have a bride that says it very clearly. So it's clearly the Odin rejecting the service of the of the Evan. Whenever the sun is bright, I'm sorry, loike, whenever the sun is dimmed, now this does not mean a, a solar eclipse that is part of the cycle. That's not a simon. That's not a bad simon. It means if the sun dims and it's not in what we know as the regular scheduled eclipses, simon It's a very bad simon for the whole world. He made a suda for his servants. <laughs> and he put um, uh, a, a light. I guess Pallas is a light. It's a lantern, not just. Kosalim, he got upset at them for whatever reason. Take away the light. Let him sit in the dark. Anytime that the planets and the moons, all the other sources of light other than the, other than the sun, Simen Ra, Lishaynem, Shal Yisrael. It's a seminar which we, which is referring to us. 
because Klal Yisrael, whenever there's a uh, whenever there's a sign that's heralding trouble, we know it always starts by the Jews. In other words, Rashi is Moshele Soifer. Imagine you see the Rebbe coming into Cheder to Bala Beis Sefer with two He comes to Cheder with a whip. Everyone knows Mudayik. Who's going to be the one who's going to be afraid he's getting whipped? Mishiraga Lukos Becholoyim Yoyim Mudayik. I could tell you in my class who was the guy who always got whipped from the Rebbe. We all know who the kid in our class who always got beaten up by the Rebbe was. He was a troublemaker. Neil, you know what I'm talking about? Mendy. <laughs> so, well, of course. So, if the Rebbe came in with a whip, Mendy titter. Mendy titter. So, we're always the one getting whipped. So, we always we have to worry whenever there's trouble coming. If the sun is dimmed, then it's bad for the Goyim. But when the Levan is like it, that's referring to us. <laughs> because we count our calendar according to the lunar calm. And there's a deeper meaning in that. And that is that we're, we're, we're usually low profile, low key. So we just are the reflection of the light from the sun. We're not, we don't want to be in the spotlight. We are, we're just, uh, we're just uh, in the limelight. Okay. Even though the moon is in the spotlight and the sun is the spotlight itself, but uh, we, we, you know, we're more we, we're more secondary. If on the eastern horizon is where the sun is dimmed, if if the eclipse is when the sun is in the center of the sky, how about pan of diamond ladam? What if the sun goes red, red? Then cher balaylam. It's a sign that there's going to be war. Lesak if it's like a, a brownish gray, it's a little bit dim. Chitzei rov balaylam. It's a sign that hunger is going to come to the world. And Rashi says when people are suffering from hunger, their faces turn dark. Lazu lazu. What if it's partially red, and partially brown? That's really bad. That's cher vechitzei rov balaylam. That means both types of trouble are coming. Laka bechni sasoi. What if the, the sun is about to set and it's about to go into its covering? That's when it becomes dim. Peronis shoyalovoi. That's a sign that the Peronis is going to be pushed off to the last minute. And it's not going to come right away because it happens first at the end of the day. It's the but upon sunrise, the Mamaharis love it. There are those who say exactly the opposite. If, if it happens at the end of the day, it means this is the last chance for it to happen. It has to happen right away, because otherwise the day is going to be over. So that means it's going to come right away. But if it's coming in the morning, where there's a whole day to deal with it, that's a sign that the Prophet won't come right away. And there's no such thing as a nation on this world that gets beaten down. That it's Gechke, it's Tsar in Shemayim, doesn't get punished with it. It says, I'm going to I'm going to judge I'm going to punish the gods of the Mitzrayim. Was Manchi Yisrael lost the change from Bakim, and when Klal Yisrael was doing the Ratzon of Hashem, Ein Misyor Mikolel, you don't need to worry about all these Shemonim. You don't got to look at the sun and the moon. It's not relevant because we're above it all when we're doing Ratzon of Bakim. Shenemar Koyim Hashem Al Derech Goyim Al Talamdu. If you don't learn from the Goyim and you do the mitzvahs and you don't copy the Goyim, then Umay Oishes Hashemayim Al Techasu. You don't have to be afraid. From any of the oysters in Shemayim, the Goyim will be afraid. You don't have to worry about it. There's four reasons why the sun will get them. Al Av Bezdin Shemais Veinisvet Kalacha. When Av Bezdin dies and he's not properly um, eulogized, he's not re- respected properly. While Naira Marasa and Naira Marasa was getting raped, the talk of ear, she's getting raped, and people hear it. And they don't care. They're indifferent. They don't help her. They miss you a lot. Well, Mishkov Zacher and Mishkov Zacher, these are things that are happening all the time. And the two brothers get killed together. These are horrible things that cause the son to get in. We shall Arbid Varim Ma'iris like it. And so first we discuss why the sun would go dim. Now we're going to discuss why the planets and other celestial beings go dim. Al Kaisve Pilaster. On people who write hit pieces. That's literally what it means. It's a hit piece. So writing things in other people's names that they didn't write to make them look bad. 
That's something that, that's very common today. People who say false testimony, and if you raise Behemadaka in Israel, and the reason why that's not allowed, the Gemara says in Babakamo, because I believe they they um, they they uh, eat up. I don't know if it says it over here, Rashi, but the the it is saying so the Chaverim. It's very hard to stop them from grazing elsewhere and from doing Geneva, so it's not allowed. While Koyt say you is toyvays, and you cut down good trees, Rashi um, Bavil and Shalahen. If you cut down a good tree, it looks like you're revealing an Hashem. And this, of course, only re- is referring to fruit trees, and we know that fruit trees are very serious to knock down. I wanted to ask Hansi to share a story, but we're so late that I have to finish the daf. And there's four reasons that causes the government to seize the property of Balabatim. Almashi Shtaris Purim. If they hold on to Shtaris, so I lend somebody money, he pays me back, but I held on to the star and I plan to use it to collect again from him. So that's that that leads to Balabatim losing their assets to the Malchus, Amav of Ribis, and those people who Amav of Ribis, Bial Shahoya, Sophic Biod, Sipek Biodam Limchois, Veloy Michus, and someone who could have protested against a misdeed, Rashi says. The Balbatim could have been if they were able to protest against the people who did a virus and prevent them from doing a virus, the loy micho and they didn't. And people who, who donate money in a in, with fanfare at a big appeal or when they're buying a lease and they never pay for it. And this also includes what if there's an appeal going on and in and, and and the guy making the appeal wants to create buzz. So he goes over two or three people and tells them, you know what, how about you donate? You announce you're donating 10,000. You don't have to give the money. Just say it to create a peer pressure. That's not allowed either. Amarav, which will arbit the varim, nixabalabatim, yoichin, latimian. There's four reasons why the nixabalabatim go latimian, which Rashi says means, shenitmamin vechalom elem. They just degrade. Al koiv shei skar socher, they don't pay. They don't pay their employees right away. They push them off, they push them off. While oizke skar socher, and those who completely steal, they don't even pay it at all. People who pass off their responsibilities and force other people to do them. And for arrogance, they bully people because of their wealth and their power. There's nothing that Hashem despises more than the Gaza Ruach. But people who are humble, humble people will yash in their control. Is hangover and shalom, and they'll have tremendous pleasure from the peace that they're going to have. Lulav is possible. The mission is later going to go through the same shulam with the hadas, a harava, and abshayu. Gazel is possible. Rashi says, because it says, the lachem is lachem. Toysus argues on Rashi, and Toysus learns that the mitzvah of Lachem is learned is learned out of a different uh, out of a different halacha. Yavish is puzzled. The bini mitzvah muderes to accept the keli van veyu. Toysus argues and says the keli van veyu wouldn't passel it, and he brings he 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 Toysus says because it's not hodor. Shalas sheira, a sheira Rashi says is a tree that you the people serve as a vayzara. The shal irani dachas, or if it was an irani dachas. And um, and Rashi says, and the Irinidachas, everything in the Irinidachas has to be burned. So the Gemara is going to tell us that since this lulav that you have has to be burned, we'll say it doesn't have to shear. Lulav has to be a certain height. But since it's said to be burned, it doesn't have any height. That's why it's puzzle, puzzle. Niktem Roisha, if the top of it was a little cut off, or nifer to Olaf, or if it's leaves, and Rashi learns that what it means is, is that the leaves of the lulav are torn, they're disconnected from the shedra. They're only held, so why don't they fall off? Because you have rings around it that's holding the leaves bunched to the shedra, but they're not actually connected to the shedra anymore. Nifr do all of, if they spread out, so Rashi, they're connected to the shedra, but they, they're, they're spread out, and you, and you don't have a ring to hold them together, so they're all spread out, then they'll be cut. So Nifr do is kosher, but Nichtam and Nifr do is possible. I said Rashi shat has a different shot. Read Oimer, Yagdenim If the leaves are spread out, all you need to do is put a ring around it 
to hold it together. Tina Harabazel, Ferris. Tina Harabazel are lulavim that are very short leaves, and the, the, the lower leaf doesn't reach the, the upper leaf. They're going to be kosher. Lulav shayaboy, sheyesh boy, shloishet tvachim, kedele and nenaboy. If a lulav has three tvachim to be able to shake, and Rashi says you need three tvachim plus one tefach, then kosher, then the lulav will be kosher. So the minimum height of a lulav is four tvachim. Zok to Gemara. Kapasuk v'tani. The Mishnah is saying without any qualification, loish no biyom tov rishon, but loish no biyom tov shayin. It seems that all of these tshulim apply equally on yom tov rishon with the mitzvah of lulav the gvulim is dairaisa, and and the and yom tov and yom tov shayin with the mitzvah of lulav is only midirabad. So tomorrow bishlam yavish hadabinim. I understand why yavish will be a tshul for all seven days because it's not hader. And hadar is what it needs to be on every single day. Veleko, a lagozel, but why is there a problem with using a stolen lulav the second day of yom? Bishlomi yom to Rishon, I understand why on the first day of yom to be can, dechsev lachem, bishol lachem. But it only says that on the first day, lukach lachem b'yom erishon. Ela b'yom to sheni, but on the second day of yom to, or the other days of yom to, after the first day, amai loy, why can't you use a lulav that's not yours? There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to use a lulav. It's not yours because you don't need lachem. There's a mitzvah baba veira. Shenemar it says vavesim gozel. There's a pisech. There's a chayla. You're going to bring to carbonus that are stolen or that are limping or sick. And the gemara says gozel dumi to pisech. Something that's stolen is no different than something that has a wound that that, that, that that's limping that has a defect. Ma pesach less like that kanta, just like not not ma piseach, ma piseach less like the kanta, just like an injured animal will never get better, and and it's a permanent injury, and never can never be used as a carbon. Av gozel less like the kanta, so too if it's stolen, there's no way to fix it. Lo shnalaf neiush, lo shnalaf achiush. It doesn't matter if the buy them are or not; it's not good for a carbon. So we'll stop here. We'll go back a couple of lines tomorrow to get more clarity. Maybe discuss toisus shishita. In, in, in Nifritu and Nifridu and Niktam, uh, but for now we'll stop here. We should have a wonderful, wonderful day. We shall all be sorry. Amen. 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 Amen.